Are you there? Can you can you yeah. hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Good. How are you I doing? Be, I'm okay. How are you? Good. Good. So, how was Venice? Uh, back in November. Yeah. Um, it was by far the most productive special trip I've I've ever made. I mean, I got so much done and I mean so much um magic happened. Yeah. You know, on that trip. Um I'll give you an example. So there was a uh mask maker mm -hmm. that I had really wanted to meet and uh, possibly interview for the um documentary. Mm -hmm. And so my assistant Angela and I, we we went to a shop and we go in and he's not there. Mm -hmm. Lady behind the counter says to us, but um this was on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. She goes, um, he's out of town through the weekend, but he'll be back on Monday. So okay, we'll we'll come back on Monday and talk to him. Mm -hmm. So we leave. And right around the corner, we walk past this other mask shop. Mm -hmm. And I look in the window and I um, see this really cool mask in the window. And I look at it and I point at it. And I said to Angela, wow, that's that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Stops and she looks in the window and she goes, oh my God. I said, what, what? She goes, you know who this is? I said, no. She goes, look at that sign. She she said this is the guy who made some of the masks for the movie Eyes Wide Shut. Oh wow! And so I look in the window and there's somebody in there. Mm -hmm. So well, do you want to go in? She goes, yeah. So um, hi Kiki, I see a Katie cat. Oh, is that my baby? Yeah, that's one of the babies. That's big old Felix. Is that the um one you found? No, the baby, he'll be, he's overeating right now. He'll, oh, you'll okay. see him. He'll come. This is his, his kind of his brother, his adopted brother. We so found him. Cat. Okay. Yes. And he uh -huh. just kind of showed up. And so I took him in and got him to the bed and had him neutered. And he's a baby now. Okay. Yeah. He's our baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we, we walk in and, and, um, it's a guy named David in there working. Mm -hmm. And, um, he, you know, he's in the back working on masks. Mm -hmm. And so we talked to him and and I said, yeah, you know, um, we'd be interested in, uh, it's his uncle, mm -hmm. um, uh, Sergio. So, yeah, we'd be interested in interviewing your, your uncle, um, if possible. He goes, well, he's actually at his other shop right now, mm -hmm. uh, which is on the Rialto Bridge. So yeah. if you want to talk to him, you can. I was like, okay, great. So then I started talking to David and I was telling him about my mask making. And I said to him, yeah, you know, I'm really um, interested in traditional. Oh, okay. I see him now. The black one. The baby. Yeah. He's yeah. trying to wow, play. He's gotten he's, big. He has gotten big. Yeah. He's, he's almost grown now. He was wow. so tiny. I mean, when I first found him, he was about this big. <laughs> he was just a tiny little puff ball. And yep, I've gotten him well. And he's a happy little camper now. They look pretty happy. That's cool. They are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Spoiled rotten. <laughs> um, so, um. I was saying to him, yeah, you know, I'm I'm really interested in traditional mask making, you know, but um, I'm just missing one step, you know, and that's basically the paper. He goes, oh, so you're interested in mask making? And I said, yeah. He goes, come on back here. So he takes me to the back and he gives me like a 30 minute tutorial on Venetian mask making. Yeah. I mean, oh, just like that. And I mean that was one of the most special things that just popped up out of nowhere or just yeah. happened like right on the spot. Yeah. You know, so we leave and go to meet Sergio 
and I'm thinking to myself on the way there, I'm thinking, okay, you know, this guy's gonna be kind of stuffy, you know, um, you know, he, he has masks and movies and it's like, uh, yeah. We get there and I mean, this is one of the sweetest guys in the world. Oh, you know, and him and I just had this great conversation about, you know, traditional mask making and the masks now compared to all the garbage that comes out of China that's yeah. you know, mass produced. And mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, this right here is one of his masks. Oh, wow. So, yeah, um, awesome. I definitely had to buy one of them. Oh, yeah. That's um, amazing. But yeah, this is one of, of Sergio's masks. Wow. That's awesome. You know, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, uh, really all I was missing was, was the, the particular type of paper, you know, mm -hmm. which is absorbent, you know, absorbs moisture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that way it's, it's easy to mold because it's made with wool. Oh, you know, okay. So, yeah. Unfortunately, you can only find that paper in in um, Italy. So, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. But but yeah, that was one of the few magical things that happened to me while I was over there, you know. And so now I'm gearing up for the next visit, which is in a few weeks for Carnival. Yeah. Um, not only for Carnival, but I am going to be photographing more for um you know like a future scent that mm -hmm. already has mine yeah that's awesome um, so, this right here is the mask i'm making for it oh wow oh that's amazing oh it's beautiful so cool you always make the coolest stuff Thank that's you. awesome yeah that's just awesome so what scent you released, um, the, I've already forgotten the name of it. Um, Nation Doll? No, you didn't release that during the sale, did you? Yeah. You did release Venetian Doll. Oh, yeah. okay, awesome. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just the Oud one. Oh, well, it's two of them. It's Venetian okay. Doll and um, Mood Enhancer. Mood Enhancer, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay, and that's the one with... Oud and rhubarb rhubarb that was it yeah yeah i've yeah. got a sample of it and it's amazing I yeah I, I i was wearing um in the mood one day mm -hmm. and i don't know what made me do it but um you know sprayed it on and i don't know what made me want to layer it mm -hmm. with the oud and rhubarb scent you know mm -hmm. but you know, I put some like right here mm -hmm. and the way they smell together was one of those, you gotta be kidding me moments. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, that's, that's where I got the idea to, um, make it a follow-up and a layering option for, yeah. uh, in the mood. Yeah. That's awesome. I love how you work with Oud because it's never overpowering. Because I, I like food, huh? Yeah, see, that's the funny thing. I, you know, I do and I don't. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I, I love working with it, but it seems like I'm working with it too much. Yeah, because it's you a know? lot. Mm -hmm. No, no, not so much that it's a lot. It's just oh. there. There are a lot of fragrances I have out that are kind of food centric. That had, yeah, but they're not ever overpowering. That's the thing. Cause oh, no. I like Oud, but I can't stand it when all, when you spray on a fragrance and then that's all you smell. It just yeah, no. like Oud. It's, no, it's, it's more of an enhancement mm -hmm. to, to the scent for me. Yeah. And, and I it love is that. a lead note. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I like pairing it with things that you don't normally find with it, you know, like rhubarb and blackberry mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. So let's talk about the four scents that you're bringing back, very limited amounts of each one, yeah. talk about each one and what they smell like so that people know. Um, so Othello, 
is a it's slightly spicy amber. Okay. Um, Desdemona is a fruity floral. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Um, it was from a series I did. Uh, um, it was one of the profiles series, like mm-hmm. Medusa, Anne Boleyn, you know, mm-hmm. they're from that series. And Othello is also... Othello and Desdemona are from that series, and there's actually three of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so Othello has notes in it like black amber, black pepper, um, black agar, okay. and then Desdemona has notes in it like white peach, white raisin, you know. And mm-hmm. so the third fragrance is called Miscegenation. And so the meaning of miscegenation is um, the mingling of different races. Mm -hmm. So the notes in it read black amber, white peach, black agar, white raisin. And so it's, it's mixing the two fragrances together. Yeah. So that one I didn't bring back out because that one is pretty difficult to make. Yeah. Um, Plus I don't really have any of that one left. Yeah. But um, yeah, those two, um, Eidolon, mm-hmm. uh, which is a cherry incense Ooh. Uh, or, or more of a, a cherry woody incense mm-hmm. um, and a little bit boozy too. Mm-hmm. You know, it was really popular for a while. Yeah. But then again, as with all of these, you know, um, various uh ingredients get discontinued mm-hmm. kind of discontinues them for that oh, right, right. So, um and then the um fourth one is um la belle dame sans merci mm-hmm. which is the the title of is actually a title of a, a oscar wilde poem mm-hmm which means basically, you know, the lady without mercy. Yeah. Um, and that one is a, a um, it's kind of a coffee based, which is something I don't work with that much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, those four. And I basically had, <clears throat> had a um stash of the base i mean that's pretty much what i do is is, is i'll make a base mm-hmm. and just kind of keep a stash of it you mm-hmm. know in case that big opportunity to you know share it with someone uh um you know like a big company or something like that pops up mm-hmm. um you know, I'll keep a stash of, of certain things. And, you know, those are four that I kept a stash to the base. But, you know, because of my shutdown, you mm-hmm. know, I decided, yeah, you know, maybe I'll, I'll put these out. You know, I mean, there have been a few people asking about them, mm-hmm. you know, particularly Othello and um, actually three of them. Othello, uh, LaBelle, and um, Eidolon. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, you know, I just thought I would at least, you know, share what I have left mm-hmm. with everybody, which is roughly about six bottles worth of, mm-hmm. of each. Nice. So once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, unless, I mean, I plan to do this anyway, you know, try and do a, a, a reformulation. Mm-hmm of them, you know, just to get them back out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's awesome. So those are going to be super special bottles for whoever gets them. Yeah. um, Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, it was yesterday I made that announcement and like half of the bottles of uh, LaBelle are already gone. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. 
I knew. And when you told me that that was coming, I knew I was like, man, people are going to see that these are super limited and they're going to want them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what, so you're going to Venice again in February for carnival, but you said you're going to do some photography for some oh, yeah. future sense. Yeah. I, I can't go there without doing photography. Yeah. Uh, for something for anything mm -hmm. you know and so um the costumes I'm, I'm making for Angela and myself mm -hmm. you know um Angela definitely you know are gonna appear on a on a on a label sometime in the mm -hmm. future nice that's awesome and that that's, that's, that's what that's what that um red mask red yeah okay awesome and I think I think I've already decided that that's going to be for Valentine's Day next year. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, awesome. So when you shut down, I know you don't know how long you're going to be shut down for, but when you open back up, I'm actually yeah, I'm actually you know looking at m maybe sometime late spring. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so so yeah, just that. a couple months. Mm -hmm. So um, when you open back up, are you going to release any new scents? I haven't decided that yet. Um, I, I have this problem, and and it's it's oversaturation. You know, it just yeah. You know, I just put out too much. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was only Halloween that I last put something out. You know, now right. I'm putting two things again. Right. You know, and so. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm with my releases. I'm going to try and slow down. I mean, I've said that before, and it <laughs> yeah. obviously hasn't worked. But yeah, um, you know, I I have three definite release dates that that I um, at least want to release something every year, and that's around Valentine's Day, which is basically now. Mm -hmm. Um, my birthday, which is May, and mm -hmm. Halloween. Okay. So those are the definite like release times. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's perfect. I think three times a year is perfect. And especially around those times, because usually people are releasing things around other times. And I always feel like yours are so, um, your release dates are so unique compared to a lot of other people. There's some that get scattered around, like for instance, Beja Floor. Mm -hmm. You know that that came out in June. Yeah, June of last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that coincided my with my spring, my late spring sales. So yeah, so it's funny because somebody asked me to do a video to talk about the five houses that I have the most fragrances of in my collection. <laughs> and I had no idea until I was actually going through my collection that I, you were one of the five houses. I think you were third uh -huh. in mine. Like I have, number one is Guerlain. I have more Guerlain than anything. Number two is Dior. I have more, almost as much Dior as I do Guerlain, but then you were third. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. Well, I mean that that's a a honor you know being behind first off you know you having so many of my sense but um also being behind those two i mean mm -hmm. those are like the heavy hitters I mean, yeah come on. yeah but yours are just so awesome and yours live out because you know i wear my diors and i wear my Guerlains, but yours are more of my like everyday wears you know, uh -huh. they live out because I wear them a lot more than I do. Because with Dior, I don't have many of their new scents. You know, I don't wear like Joy or, you know, some of those newer ones that came out. I've got like Vintage Poison. Um, most of mine are, my Dior's are actually vintage. And that's why I have them because they're the good formulations. Um, I am i don't love Dior's new stuff. You know, I want to tell you a little secret. Um mm -hmm. And I mean, somebody will probably jump on this once I say this, you know, and mm -hmm. it won't, it won't be my idea anymore, but yeah. you know, whatever. 
um, at one point, I actually wanted to make a submission to Dior. Yeah. And do a submission for a poison for men. Ooh. That would be awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, it's too bad they never did make a poison for men. Yeah, I think they should. I mean, should. me, that's probably my favorite um, series in, in, in the Dior line. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely me too. Yeah. And my mom wore it when I was itty bitty. So uh -huh. I used to get into her closet and I would be, you know, under all her dresses and she would keep, she had this big jewelry box that she kept on the floor and then she put her perfumes on top of it. So I would crawl in there when I was just little and be under her dresses and be spraying on, you yeah. know, poison <laughs> that I thought smelled like grape juice at the time. Yeah, that, that, that's... It's kind of what I was like when I was young. Yeah. You know, just making sure nobody's looking before, you know. You start spraying. <laughs> spraying yeah. my father's or my grandmother's. Yeah. <laughs> fragrance on me, you know. Yeah. It, it didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My my mother, she wasn't a poison person. My mother was an opium. Yeah. Person. Oh, yeah. She liked opium and um, she liked cashmere. Mm hmm uh, you know, those two. Yeah. I mean, back in the eighties. Yes. You know, then then she grew to the, you know, your your basic um department store type scents like like, you know, some of the Liz Taylor fragrances and things like that. But yeah. Um when she was a poison, not poison, um, opium mm -hmm. where, you know, that for me said said a lot you know i really and and i i don't know i should i should have you know the older i got i should have bought her a bottle yeah you know, a gift or something mm -hmm. uh, but yeah that smelling opium on her just kind of left an impression on me mm, oh yeah yeah scent memories like that are amazing that's what yeah. i remember most about my childhood really is the well, not the most, but it's a huge part of what I remember from my childhood is are the perfumes my mom wore. She also had opium. She had Estee Lauder Cinnabar, which mm -hmm. she would wear that around Christmas time. So that was, that is such a massive like scent memory for me. Um, yeah, I have all kinds of scent memories from being a kid. She wore Tender Poison when it came out. Mm, the green so, bottle. Yeah. yeah, the green bottle. Yeah. yeah. Um, she had Reeve Gauche from... YSL. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. She had all of those like heavy hitters. I have, I have a funny East Saint Laurent story. So my father is, is, um, a man, you know, yeah. back in 85, um, you know, when I was well into fragrance, you know, I'm, I, I have this Vogue magazine, I'm in high school and I'm flipping through it and, mm -hmm. You know how they have those scent strips yeah. in magazines. Well, Paris by Yves Saint Laurent was one of them. So I'm smelling it. And I'm thinking, myself, wow, this smells good. Yeah. And so eventually I actually bought myself a bottle of it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wearing it around. And one day my father goes, what's that you're wearing? I said, oh, it's called Paris. He goes, really? I said, yeah. Next thing I know, next week, he has a bottle of it. <laughs> and so he's spraying it out himself, and I'm smelling. I'm like, did you just use my fragrance? He goes, no, I, I got some for myself. And then he starts singing, but when I get to Paris, I'm like, um, you do know that's a women's scent, don't you? <laughs> and he goes, well, well man, this, this is the one they made for men. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh gosh, yeah. that's so funny. So he didn't care. It smelled oh, good to him he too. He, he did he, care. He, he did and he didn't, but <laughs> yeah. did he still wear it after that? Uh, no, no. He gave oh, it to Oh no. Friend. He yeah. gave it to his girlfriend. Yeah. Oh no, I hate that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's because we've been so 
condition to think that fragrance is either feminine or masculine when fragrance isn't gendered like fragrance you know anybody can wear anything men can wear women's fragrances women can wear men's fragrances I'm very traditional in how I wear fragrance but that doesn't mean everybody has to be you know I don't like to smell like a man but yeah um I will say some men can wear some women's fragrances Mm -hmm. and and vice versa Mm -hmm. um it depends on the fragrance. It depends on the person. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, sometimes body chemistry alone just won't let it happen. Right. Um, then there are times when personality won't let it happen. Right. You know, it, it just doesn't seem right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's a fragrance I have, and it's one of my all-time favorite scents. Mm-hmm. And I have it because I absolutely love the smell, but I never wear it. Yeah. You know, um, it's because um, it's it's it screams feminine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's um, Shanghai Lily, you know, by, by Tom Ford. Tom Ford. Mm-hmm. And I've even tried layering it uh-huh. you know, with something like tobacco vanille or tobacco oud, which which works. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um layering it with tobacco knee, you know, gave me the idea to uh, work with rhubarb mm-hmm. for, you know, a scent. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really strong clove floral, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, that, that, got clove, it. That, that clove note in it, you know, makes, makes me say, okay, maybe I can wear this, you know, just yeah. that spicy clove note, mm-hmm. you know, but there's, um, there's a floral accord in it. That's mm-hmm. just really, really feminine. Yeah, definitely. I've got a travel spray of it. So yeah, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I mean, it all boils down to what you feel good wearing. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I mean, there's, there, good there good. are some, there are some, uh, uh, feminine fragrances that I do wear proudly. Mm-hmm. Um, Orchidee Vanille is one of them. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I love it. Um, yeah, that one. Oh, it's so good. And I can totally see that on a man too, because yeah, it's not it, feminine. Yeah. That one had my name written all over it. So yeah. I smelled it. You know, it's like, whether I wear this or not, I have to have this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oud Save the Queen, Mm -hmm. you know, by um, Atkinson's. Oh, Atkinson's, yeah. Yeah. Um, That one actually, going back to uh, uh, scent leaving an impression on you, that one, actually, I have that because it reminds me of a childhood memory. Oh, okay. Yeah. um, Yeah. When I would go to my grandmother's house, you know, I always loved going into her bathroom. Mm-hmm. The bathroom always smelled like strawberry glycerin soap and incense. Ooh. And so that's what Oud Save the Queen smells like to me. Yeah. You know, strawberry glycerin soap and incense smells like my grandmother's bathroom. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. But yeah, I'm like you. I don't want to smell like a man. You know, I'm very traditional in that I do not wear men, you know, uh, masculine leaning fragrances. I'll wear unisex, but if it dries down really, really masculine on me, then it's like a no go. Yeah. And I understand men that don't want to smell like women, you know, that wouldn't. But I do have some subscribers that are men that they wear full on, like only women's fragrances. It's mm-hmm. like you, that's awesome. If you, if it smells good on you and you are comfortable wearing it, then you should. Yeah, wear it absolutely. Every day. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. um, it, as soon as I run out of it, I'm probably going to do this. But the Tom Ford um, Noir Extreme. Mm-hmm. So I got the men's version of that, and it turns out not only does the women's version perform better it actually mm-hmm. smells better mm-hmm. you know so yeah once i run out of of the men's i'm gonna get the the women's yeah 
I understand because I've smelled both of those and you're right. The women's is way better than mm-hmm. the men's. Um, I was going to ask you, I don't think I've ever asked you this before, but aside from your own fragrances, how many fragrances do you actually own in your collection? Somewhere between maybe 30 and 40. Okay. Awesome. What are your favorite fragrances out of those? Um, Besides your Tom Ford's. Yeah. <clears throat> My favorite fragrances mostly are, are vintage. Mm-hmm. So um, On Sunset by Givenchy. Mm-hmm. Um, Relax by Davidoff, which is really funny because relax is one of my all-time favorites Mm -hmm. and it's by davidoff who actually makes my all-time most hated fragrance you know which is cool water yeah um relax by davidoff um speaking of feminine um coral mandel by chanel Mm -hmm. um which is, be careful with that trigger. It is so beastly. Yeah. I mean, just one spray will do you. That's the it's patchouli tough. one? Um, no, it's a coriander. Oh, okay. Does it have yeah, patchouli it, in it? I feel like I remember patchouli with that one, but I'm probably it, I think it it might, but if it does, it's kind of in the background. Okay. Um, yeah, the cori- that coriander is front and center. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, and it never leaves you. It's the coriander, at least, is pretty linear. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Uh, some of the um, angel scents like Iceman, um, Bee Man, um, The Dreamer by Versace. Mm-hmm. Um, of that bottle. What else? I'm trying to think of how I have them organized. Um, yeah. The modern scent, I would say that is maybe my um, signature, my current signature, mm-hmm. um, is is Noir Esquisse. Oh, okay. Um, by uh, L'Artisan. Mm-hmm. Um, that one, yeah. You know, that one's a, a definite compliment getter for me. Is that? Yeah. Um, what else do I have? So then some of the real vintage ones I have that I, that I like, um, there's one called Poor Louis by Oscar de la Renta, mm-hmm. um, couple of the Bijan scents I really like, mm-hmm. um, those are the type that get relegated to being <laughs> sold in, in, um, Ross. Oh Yeah. Um, so yeah, I yeah, there's yeah, there's a bunch I have in my in my um in my stash. Yeah, that's awesome. I had never asked you that before, so I'm glad that I remembered to this time. Yeah, I mentioned Oud Save the Queen and Orchid Um mm-hmm. There's one that was sold in a bottle that looked like a puck, and it was Bulgari Black. Yeah. Um, I've heard good things about that. I've never yeah. smelled it though. Yeah, it's it's a great man's scent. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's smells like it's very coumarin heavy. Mm-hmm. Um what else do I got in there? Uh uh Anteos by Chanel. Um there's one called Jaipur. Mm, yeah. It's really great. Um as a matter of fact, I would say it doesn't smell like it, but um, my fragrance, Cashmere, is kind of in that same wheelhouse as, as Jaipur. Jaipur. Yeah. Which is, um, starts with a B, Boucheron. Boucheron, right? yeah. Boucheron. Yeah. Is it the women's one or the men's one? No, it's the men's. Men's, okay. Yeah. Awesome. I don't think I've ever smelled the men's. Yeah, it, it definitely smells like... Um, a lady could wear it. Oh, really? Okay. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, if if you're going by my my scale that I put up on my website, I would say it's like 
65, 35 masculine. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely not too masculine. Right. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, and I checked before I asked to see if you had a free grant to page and I see that you do, mm -hmm. which is great. Now, did you have to do that? Um, somebody actually did it for me. That's awesome. Um, they apparently knew one of the moderators for, for Fragrantica mm -hmm. and just suggested me to them. Nice. And that's how I got started. Oh, okay. I don't cool. know how updated it is though. I sent them um, an update about four months ago mm -hmm. because I hadn't updated it in like three, four years. Yeah, I was, um, I was just looking, I'm going to look through for a second here i was just looking and it does it's got a ton of older fragrances that yeah. i haven't even heard of um it's got a lot of your new ones too does it so yeah maybe they did because normally when they do the updates still they'll, they'll contact me and let me know but they didn't contact me so oh okay yeah i mean there are a few of the newer ones um maybe like six that I see. So oh, really? huh. yeah, there's like white rabbit, damn hippie, ghost dance. Um, yeah, those aren't really new. I'm no. Like beige of floor and. Oh yeah. No, none of those are on here. Oh, so yeah, they haven't, they haven't put them up because I updated yeah. it with like 10 new scents. I sent, I sent it in. So yeah, maybe. Oh, I, okay. I Hopefully they'll do more. it. It's been four months. Yeah, that's crazy. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder what takes so long. It normally doesn't take that long. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, but yes, there are a ton of fragrances on here that I've never even heard of. But all of the ones that you're bringing back, that the limited ones, I think yeah. all of them. Are yeah, here. those are there. Yeah, so that's great. So yeah, I mean, you can actually go and see what I was talking about with the Othello and the Desdemona. And, yeah. <clears throat> you know, see the notes in, in in those. Yeah, which I'm super excited. I'm going to go and look through all of the older ones that I've never seen before. I saw one, Apple Rum and Jasmine or something. Yeah, that one, <clears throat> again, that's another one that got nixed because materials you know, three or four of the materials were discontinued yeah oh no yeah it looks amazing some of these older ones they look so good but what happened with vanilla opioid now is that a um, perfumology exclusive it's going to be okay yeah it's going to be um probably like once um I shut everything down. Um, mm -hmm. And even when I bring it, the, the website back up, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's one that you're only going to be able to get through, through perfect analogy. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. I've got a sample of it. It's been year, not years, but probably like a good year since I've tested it. So I need to. Yeah. To I made um, a new batch of that um, a few days ago. Mm -hmm. you know I had brought it back um mm -hmm. it's it's just really difficult to make yeah um and the thing is is and I say real difficult is because it's you know going back to talking about oud and, and not being so prominent that one is probably my most heaviest oud mm -hmm. fragrance that I have yeah and it's a little too strong you know so <clears throat> you know the last batch i just made um it's trying to tone it down just a little bit yeah um are there any of those older scents that you would want to bring back if you could get the materials again or if you could find a replacement well apple rum and jasmine definitely uh yeah 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 they're good five or six i mean you know, I don't, I don't have my list in front of me, but yeah, there are definitely some I would love to bring back. Yeah. 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 Well, 
um, Maybe. Eid Eidolon, definitely, you know, the, the, um, and because it was so popular, um, Othello. Yeah. You know, Othello is really popular amongst um, the men, you know, my male customers. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a really, um, like a really masculine, beautiful fragrance. I like that they have good description on um, fragrance kit too. Yeah, I have to write all that. Myself yeah, I send in the submissions for them. Yeah, and I'm glad you do because that's when I look at fragrances on Fragrantica, I want to see what the actual brand or perfumer has to say about the perfume. I don't like reading the notes or like that people can just pick mm -hmm. because I think you can just like vote for what notes are in it, not necessarily. And does does that make sense? Like, I think. Well, keep yeah, I mean, um there's some <clears throat> ingredients that are in fragrances that perfumers don't even mention. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> some people call them quote unquote phantom notes, but <clears throat> for instance, um, it's not listed, but uh, going back to Tom Ford, uh, Noir Extreme, mm -hmm. I mean, and I even, ha I still have some, I can even send it to you. That fragrance is such a galbanum bomb. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much galbanum in that, mm -hmm. but it's not listed in the notes. Yeah, I wonder why. You know, uh, uh, I think it's part of an accord. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe the Kulfi Accord, mm -hmm. but there's so much galbanum in that. Um, you know, Coumarin is in like half of the men's fragrances you smell. Yeah. Like it's never really listed as a note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why every time you smell a, well, I shouldn't say every time, but a lot of times when you smell like a designer men's fragrance, they all end up kind of smelling the same. They either smell Coumarin like or they smell mm -hmm. citrusy. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, that's why I don't really, uh, because I do get a lot of requests from men who want me to talk more about men's fragrance. And I'm just not very knowledgeable about men's fragrances at all, number one. And number two, I don't like many of them because I feel like a lot of the mainstream designer ones all smell the same, or they're all trying to smell like Chanel um, blue or the blue one. Or yeah, all I feel like they all smell like that. And I just, I don't like it. I just don't like them. Me neither. Me neither. Yeah. That's why um, <clears throat> a lot of the, the fragrances I have on my, on my shelf that were intended for men, mm -hmm. they all, what I like about them is that they all have something to say for themselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, they don't smell like other no. fragrances do, you know, I mean, and that's one of the reasons why I hate, um, cool water so much because yeah. that was released everything smelled like cool water after that actually well i take that back cool water is actually a ripoff of green Eyes tweet so yeah once green Eyes tweet was released everything started smelling like green Eyes tweet yeah but at least here in the states it was it was cool water that capitalized on that um that that ripoff mm-hmm you know, because you never really heard of Green Iris Tweet here in the night. No. You know, it was, it was fragrances that no. um, smell like the previous release of some other house. It's like, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Um, you know, what What I'll do for you sometime or another is is I'll make you samples of some men's fragrances. and send Oh, okay. That would be awesome because yeah, I do get requests and I just don't have many. I have some men's fragrances in my collection, but I just don't have many, um, you know, not enough that I could be helpful. I think you would like Anteus. Um, you would probably like KL, which is a Karl mm -hmm. Lagerfeld fragrance. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, Aung San Say. Um, I'm sure you know what the dreamer smell. Have you smelled the dreamer? Yeah, it's been a while, but yeah. yeah. Um, I'll send you Jaipur. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you a few of them. Okay, that would be awesome. Yeah, because then I could make a video and at least be somewhat helpful. <laughs> there would at least be one men's video on my channel. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Um, yeah, I haven't smelled the Dreamer in a long time. I love that bottle though. Yeah, yeah. Versace with, Dreamer bottle. Yeah, with the really relief pretty. on it, yeah. Yeah, it's really pretty. Oh no, I was just going to say that usually when I'm drawn to a men's fragrance, it's because it has a lot of Tonka in it. Oh, uh-huh. Okay. I love Tonka. Yeah, so anytime a men's fragrance is really Tonka heavy, ooh, I love it. Well, Tonka is kind of the same, well, not the same, but it's the similar wheelhouse is Coumarin. Yeah. Um, Coumarin is a little more, for lack of a better term, a little more chemically. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it smells like it's Tonka with a little Ambroxan thrown into it. Right. Yeah. Which I like, and I like Coumarin. Um, mm -hmm. It's a nice, it's a nice note, but I like Tonka a lot better. But I understand why people use Coumarin. It's probably a lot cheaper than Tonka. I don't use Tonka enough. Um, I have a amber that I made, which is, it's, it's one of those scents that um, I've made that I felt so special about it that I still haven't released it yet, you know. Oh. You know, so this is like my my signature amber. Oh, okay. Fragrance. Um, yeah. And and Tonka is is a big part of it. That's awesome. I bet it's so nice. Yeah. I, love it's, um, I think part of the reason is is I can't think of a, a decent name for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah um yeah i mean I, I think i've gone through maybe three or four different names with it and they just didn't suit it yeah yeah that's funny yeah i bet that is i bet <laughs> that is difficult to name all your fragrances sometimes it is um yeah rarely it is uh, uh, mm -hmm. because a lot of times I'll go in with a concept, mm -hmm. um, you know, like for instance, the, the one I was telling you about earlier that I want to uh, photograph in, in Venice is coming trip. I already have a title in mind, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, normally I'll go in with a particular concept when, when I'm creating a scent, you know, but yeah. sometimes a lot of these scents you know they'll just pop up without a concept it's just me noodling around with with um fragrance you know for instance last night while I was uh filling orders mm -hmm. just all of a sudden a combination just popped up into my head that I wrote down oh, yeah I gotta try this yeah so yeah that's awesome is that a calla lily pin on your, I've been looking at it. Yeah. I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Gosh, I love um, calla lilies. Yeah, this is, um, it has like a mother pearl right there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Pin. That is beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I love calla lilies. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, they're such beautiful flowers. This is kind of a dumb off-topic question, but is it cold in Italy this time of year? Yeah, it's about 45, 50 okay. degrees right okay. now. Yeah, yeah, so it's cold. Um, Not freezing, but yeah, it's cold. It's cold, yeah. I hate it. Anything below 60 to me is cold. Oh, man. I, um. Yesterday, uh, um, when I was coming from getting my um, my jaw worked on, um, mm -hmm. just feeling the the cold air mm -hmm. and saying to myself, "Yeah, you know what? If it was like this all the time, yeah, I could live with this." Oh um, yeah. Um, it was 
anything, it was a little nippy to the face, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but um, yeah, I, I prefer the cold yeah. to, to heat in any day. Yeah, That's my daughter. She is, gosh, she cannot stand hot weather. Loves oh, really? the cold. Yeah, yeah, she can't stand hot weather. She loves it when it's cold out. She's that kid that, you know, people are looking at me crazy because they think that I'm like abusing her because she'll go out in a tank top in 50 degrees, 45 degrees. Uh -huh. She just, she's super hot natured and yeah, um, she cannot stand and we just don't live in a good climate for her <laughs> I mean yeah. it's like yeah we're pushing subtropical where I am and it's it's hell for her yeah um here you know we don't really have seasons here which mm -hmm. kind of disappoints me you know mm -hmm. I mean it'll get cold but it won't snow yeah and I I really wish it would Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't like when it gets really freezing cold for no reason. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be freezing cold, but the sky is clear. Yeah. You know, that, that drives me crazy. Yeah. We get that a lot too. And I don't like it either. I mean, well, it'll snow maybe once a year, but maybe once every four years wow. or something. Yeah. yeah. So we don't get snow, but we do get all the seasons. We just don't get much snow. Yeah, yeah, we don't get that here at all. Yeah. The last time it snowed proper here was 1975. Oh, wow. So before I was even born. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, you're in Northern California. Yeah, well, Central, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, that's where my, I've got ants there, ants and cousins in that area. Uh huh. When you do have an idea like that, that just comes to you, when you're like, oh, I need to try this and this mm -hmm. together. Um, do you do it? Do you like stop what you're doing and do it immediately? Or have you done it yet? Sometimes. Um, I've gotten to the point where I actually write things down. Yeah. And get back to it. Mm -hmm. You know, but the danger in that is that I'll write it down and I'll forget where I wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. You know, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, um Last night, I got an idea for four notes. What were they? Apple, lemon, lily of the valley, honey. Ooh. Um, and the way that came about is, you know, I was mixing somebody's order and and it's weird how this 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 happens um, because it's completely unassociated with the idea. Mm -hmm. You know, I could be mixing an amber scent and all of a sudden a floral just literally comes in my nose. All of a sudden I'll smell something. Where mm -hmm. it's coming from, I have no idea. And that actually is what happened last night. You know, just in in my head, I could smell something. Yeah. You know, that just said, yeah. you know, apple and lily of the valley. Okay, what what would I do to, you know, make it more feminine? Okay, we'll add a little more lemon, to, add a little lemon to it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and to kind of smooth it out and sweeten it up. Okay, well, maybe some honey. Mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah, that's, that's how that came about. Nice. That's awesome. I bet it'll smell good when you do it. Oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, it will. Um, I think I always rush to ask you everything right up front and then I do this <laughs> and I'll forget. You know, you should have your, uh, one, one day when we do an interview in the future, you should have your daughter ask me questions. Yeah, too. yeah I can do that for sure. Yeah. She loves to, she loves to be involved she's like nocturnal though uh-huh well yeah yeah she's like me pretty much are you oh yeah. yeah yeah that's what she is she's nocturnal she stays up super like into the early hours and then sleeps through the day and she's Norm lucky she can do that yeah <laughs> if if i um have nothing to do mm -hmm. on the following day you know mm -hmm. like 
like after this, uh, you know, I have to go to the ballet company, but um, mm -hmm. like for instance, tomorrow morning, I probably won't, well, I should say tonight, I probably won't be going to sleep until tomorrow morning. Yeah. I'll be working on night on costumes and then getting orders, you know, out. Oh, yeah. Um, like last night I made four big batches and, you know, it was up until, you know, three in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, making these batches for for orders and so yeah. it's going to be more of that tonight yeah yeah which I understand you know it's as well nice as well work. as um oh man I must have where are they I must I must have spent a good four hours um Cutting out labels, you know, for bottles. Yeah. You know, so. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So this, I mean, if any of your um, subscribers order this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Um, the thing about this one, though, is. Uh -huh. um, is it backwards? That is backwards. I hate it when it does that. No, I could see it. You can see it, but it's it's mirrored. I, I don't, yeah. Like oh, I'm, no, I mean, so it fun. wasn't backwards for me. Oh, it's not? No, it wasn't can, backwards. You can read it? Yeah, I can read it. Yeah, see, it's yeah. it's backwards for me. I don't know why it's backwards. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, but it must be inverted. Yeah. Um, if your subscribers order this one, mm -hmm. it's the bottle itself is going to be appear black. Oh, okay. What you have to do is you have to hold this up to a light mm -hmm. and then you'll see the image on it. Oh, okay. It's, it's, um, I don't know if I could show this. I don't know if you can see. Oh, that. yeah, I see. So yeah, you see how you can see through that? Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the original White Rabbit one. Right, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I love those labels. Those ones are really cool. But yeah, um, I got the, this is one that was, I brought back recently. Um, so that's Hill of Tara. Oh, okay. Um, flowers, everyone in the mood, orange moonshine, blood cherry, ruby, this is, you never seen this one, but this is um, La Belle Dame Sans Mercy. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm trying to find the new one. Oh, here's one of the new ones. Ooh, that's beautiful. Oh my goodness. And... Here is the other new one. Ah, oh, awesome. Is that the one that you did in Venice? Yeah. 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 A couple months That's ago. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Speaking of Ruby, um, somebody, I'm trying to think, did somebody send me a sample? Somebody sent me a sample, I think, of a fragrance that is based on pink chocolate like yours that's ruby no it, a niche one it's oh somebody else somebody uh -huh. else did yeah it was a niche fragrance i'll have to see i'll go see if i can find it in a second but it's a niche fragrance that somebody made based on pink chocolate and when i read it i'm gonna have to find it because i have a feeling that yours came out way before theirs did hold on i'll be right back back let me see yeah, um, a subscriber just sent me a bag of um, sample. No, it's one of these ones. I think it's this one called Mystic Sugar. Mm -hmm. Is this it? No. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. Let me see. Yeah, and it's funny. I think I'll remember when I... 
when when the um you'll remember it when we end the uh zoom chat do what you remember it when we end the zoom chat yeah probably it's always how it works yeah yeah always um it's got to be one of these i'm gonna look it up on for drink really quickly because when i when i filmed this um smelly mail video i'm gonna look it up really quickly i think it's this one hong kong um Hong Kong chocolate. Yes, this is the one right here. And yeah, see, it came out in 2023. And it's funny because I thought, mm, I wonder if they got the idea from Vincent. Um, hey, come on. Come on, buddy. Come in. Um, is this it? I'm trying to think. Is this <laughs> can yeah. you see? Uh oh, I see some ears. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> he's such a baby. He's gonna. He's looking at you. <laughs> he's so funny. Let me see if I can. Can I hold you up, baby? There you go. There he hey, is. Buddy. He's sweet baby, and that's my boy. <laughs> this is my heart. I love this cat so much. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. When I as soon as I smelled this, I was like. Oh, that smells familiar. It might be a different one. I don't know if it's this one or maybe another one. Cause I remember when I looked it up, it talked about pink chocolate and they were trying to make a, um, or Ruby chocolate or whatever it's called. And they were trying to make it smell like that. And I, I even okay. said, this smells like really similar to Vincent's Ruby and yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, there's so much plagiarism going on in mm -hmm. the perfume world. I mean, kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier, you know, how, mm -hmm. um, you know, one scent begats another, begats another, and then it's, it all yeah. of a sudden becomes the thing. Yeah, you it know, does. Like, like everybody's remaking Baccarat Rouge right now. Yes. Oh, you my know? gosh. I'm um, so over it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you asked me this four or five years ago, I would have been pissed off to the highest level of pistiffity. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with regards yeah. to being plagiarized, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, who's to say that they didn't have that idea on their own? Right. You no. Know? Right. Yeah. But I don't know. It smelled awfully. A it smelled an awful lot like yours. I can't remember if it's this one or if it's I'm another say this. one. Mine came out in 2021, so. Yeah. Yeah, this one, it, I, like, be sure. And I'm not saying that they copied you, but yeah, yeah. it smells an awful lot like it. And then when you, in the description of their fragrance, sounded an awful lot like the description of your fragrance, how you know, you talk about you're trying to recreate the smell of yeah. ruby chocolate that you had tasted. And yeah, it was, it was like the same kind of situation. And I was oh, like, okay, oh. yeah, see, then if that's the case, that's, it sounded like it to me. Yeah. I was like, they must have gotten hold of a bottle of incense or maybe a sample or something and then decided that they were going to make their own. Or at least looked at the website. Yes, or looked at the website. Absolutely. Because, you know, that's what I say in the description on the website. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I was saying when I was reading about it on Fragrantica. I was like, that sounds just like what Vincent has on his website for yeah. Ruby, which you, you don't have Ruby on there anymore, do you? On the website? Yeah. yeah. Yes, there. It is still there? I think so, yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to go back and look. I haven't. Um... I go to your website so often that the, if I even type in the letter D, it, it automatically brings <laughs> your website up. <laughs> and so, I um, let me see. Ruby, yeah, yeah, it's there. It's there. Okay, yep. awesome. Yeah, I love Ruby. I forget to tell people that Ruby is such an amazing one that they should definitely be getting their hands on especially if they're chocolate lovers yeah it's um it's a weird one for me is it um, yeah uh, something about it um 
I love it, but it's one, it's kind of like white rabbit, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, when I smell it, I could say to myself, you know, this could stand a little bit of reformulation. Mm -hmm. And then I did the reformulation and then all of a sudden it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, So yeah, I really want to do that with, with Ruby. Just kind okay. of just refine it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Which that would be good because then it would become more unique probably from whoever this other. Yeah. Is. <laughs> That's I'm pretty sure took inspiration from you. Well, all of a sudden now I think a little under seven minutes left. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. What is he doing? He's hilarious. That's what he does. He's sitting like a little man on the couch and he's kicking his foot because he wants to play. He wants somebody to play with him so bad. <laughs> oh, what are you doing, you silly boy? Oh my gosh, I love that cat. Uh, he is my baby. He's so funny. He wants somebody to play with him. He wants me to come over there and rub his stomach and then he'll, you know, scratch me and bite me and play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's such a sweetheart. All my animals are spoiled rotten. They should be. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I still can't bring myself to get one. Yeah. I don't blame you. Well, you travel and, you know, you're busy. That's one of the so. big reasons is yeah. it's, I'm kind of in and out of the place that, yeah. Yeah, I understand. I wouldn't want any animals either if I, you know, was on the go all the time. I mean. Or just busy. Yeah, if if I lived with someone, you mm -hmm. know, like if I had a girlfriend or a wife or something like that. Yeah. Then yeah, I would because yeah. then somebody at least would be around to look after them unless of course she travels as well right um but yeah i yeah i couldn't like my cat when i had my cat i remember i went overseas for six weeks yeah <clears throat> and um somebody would come in to to feed her but she never really had that companionship you know and yeah yeah i remember um when I got home, everywhere I went, she followed me. Everywhere I went, she followed me. Oh, you know, so yeah, that that alone made me say, okay, I'm I'm not leaving you alone again. Yeah, yeah, which I understand, and it's hard when you travel and do yeah. things. Back when I was in my early to mid twenties, I would travel a lot, and I had dogs, and. I've always had like little dogs and it would be hard because I would have to find somewhere for them to go and, you yeah, know, be away yeah. from them. And yeah, it's just not worth it. Yeah. See my sister, Angela, you know, she has cats, um, but you know, one, she's a married woman Two, she has two mm -hmm. kids, three, mm -hmm. she also has her mother living with her, you know, so oh, yeah. because she's a traveling model, mm -hmm. she actually has someone home looking after the cats at least yeah yeah you no know, so and they're not left alone no no yeah yeah that works out but yeah I get it I would if I know if I lived your life I wouldn't have a pet yeah um I can't right now plus you know the emotional scars that the previous one left on me yeah oh your cat yeah yeah was it a he or a she it was a she she, um, yeah. yeah, it's just, I, I, that's a hurt that I don't want to go through again. Yeah, I know. Losing pets is the worst. Yeah. It really is. I know I've got my two dogs and they're 12 and it is terrifying to me Yeah, because they're getting old and I know I don't have, you know, like best case scenario, I'll probably have five more years with them, maybe. Mm-hmm. If I'm lucky, but that's like being very generous yeah. <laughs> because yeah. usually they don't live that long. Yeah, it kills me. So the sale is going. You've extended this one for the people that ordered samples. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's going to the thirty first. Perfect. Um, and like I mentioned, you know the the um, 
fragrances you know i brought back they're very limited mm -hmm. um those four they're not available on the uh um get one free side you can mm -hmm. purchase and request anything else on the website but mm -hmm. one of those you can't you can't purchase one and get another one of those for for right. free um there's the still the little contest mm -hmm. um, which you know again talking about plagiarism you know that idea got stolen from me well i don't know and it, maybe someone did it before me i don't know but wow. that was stolen for me um the following year mm -hmm. after i did it in 2017 mm -hmm. um you know by a parisian perfumer um so yeah, that I'm I'm going to be sending out samples of something I've created, mm -hmm. and to my VIP customers. And so Claire asks, "What's a VIP customer?" Well, that's basically anyone who's ordered upwards of twenty, made twenty orders plus from mm -hmm. me. So mm -hmm. um, I'm sending samples of them. Plus, I'm selecting two people from the sale to mm -hmm. participate. Um, so sample is sent. I'm going to send the notes and then, um, I'd be quick about this. I'm going to send the notes and then you think of a name for it. Yeah. And then get back to me with, with your, your, uh, suggestion. So. Awesome. That'll be super fun. That's going to be awesome. So we're about to shut off here. Okay. Well, it has been so good to talk to you as always, Great and I will get this up very soon. I know people love to see you. They love these interviews. So love it'll be up you. very soon. Huh? I love doing them for you. Good. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. It's so good to sit down with you. Great to sit down with you too.